Hey everyone, I am going to embark on a game I have not played in a great, great many years, and that is the Battle of Corona. Uh, this is one that's part of the uh, series of Spanish campaigns uh, published by Clash of Arms back in the uh, early 1990s. And probably the last time I played it was back in the 1990s, so could be close to 20 years since I last played this game. Um, it's an interesting game. Uh, we're looking here a little bit at the map itself. Uh, it's pretty much wide open uh, country. Uh, lots of clear hexes, but lots of slopes and little streams and things like that. Um, and then what's particular about the countryside is it's kind of cut up with lots of a rough terrain and little walls that make uh, movement for artillery and uh, cavalry particularly restricted. Um, cavalry charges are almost but not quite worthless. Um, so this is a little bit of the map. We'll look in at some of the details. All right, here we're looking at the uh, port of Karuna. Um, part of the uh, situation is that the uh, English are being chased out of Spain and they're uh, retreated back to Corona, which is on the northern uh, western corner of the Iberian Peninsula and they are trying to evacuate their army uh, before it can be attacked by uh, the French forces. So uh, part of what uh, happens here is there's an opportunity for you to uh, bring in British ships and load up your troops here in the port and evacuate them. Uh, and we're looking here at the, at the town itself. Uh, so it has this, uh, these wharfs uh, along there in the breakwater. Uh, it also has a series of uh, fortifications um, so it's a little bit uh, of a challenge uh, for the French to get there. Of course, they got to fight their way through the British Army before they get to that point. Um, but this is an interesting uh, feature of the map. Now, overlooking the harbor, uh, we have a uh, the Castillo de San Diego, which is a sort of medieval fort that's there. Uh, if the French get there and they start to unlimber some of their artillery, uh, that can trigger then the uh, British evacuating uh, prematurely or the fleet uh, leaving, or it could bring on, uh, you know, intervention from the uh, warships in the harbor. We've got uh, some other villages in the area. I've marked out here on the map where some of the British starting positions are uh, out in this area along the road that leads, uh, which was the where the British had evacuated and the French are following them. And so here we can see some of the different starting spots uh, that are marked out in red for the British. And then we have the French coming in here along the uh, southern uh, area of the map around the uh, southern edge as they come in and then they've got some cavalry that we're trying to do sort of a wide sweeping movement out over to the west. Now uh, we're looking at a close view of one of the uh, areas on the map where in the real battle there was quite a lot of fighting around this little village of Elvina. Uh, you can also get a sense of how this uh, map looks. This is one of Rick Barber's maps and you can get a good feel for uh, the terrain there, particularly a sort of a feel for how rocky it was and uh, you can see all those little gray stone walls that uh, were uh, throughout the landscape here marking off farmland and pasture. 
and that's what made it particularly inhospitable for the cavalry to be used effectively. Um, so this is a fairly typical map uh, from Rick Barber, but it kind of once again gives you the flavor for the terrain and uh, is very visually appealing. Now here we're looking at the order of battle for the second corps under the command of Marshal So. Uh, we've got a pretty good contingent of light troops which are very important uh, for fighting against the British. And then we have some line troops and some allied troops that are of questionable uh, value and, uh, and uh, morale levels are not all that great. And then we've got a fair amount of uh, cavalry. Now in this particular setup, it's very interesting because we have uh, the regular types of cavalry here with their normal movement. Uh, but these dragoons can also fight dismounted. So if you don't have them in their mounted uh, you know, formation, you can have them dismounted and then you would replace the uh, mounted counter with the dismounted and then move them and treat them as uh, infantry uh, for the purposes of combat. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, the French have got a uh, smaller force infantry-wise than the English. Uh, they've got a lot of cavalry, but they can't use it as effectively given the terrain restrictions. They've got some more artillery though, and so um, they have to kind of play to their strengths as best they can. All right, now here we are looking at the uh, British Army under the command of Sir John Moore. And we see here we've got uh, four divisions of uh, British troops. And then there's a contingent of Spanish volunteers, more or less mobs, uh, you know, uh, irregular troops that were mustered up to defend uh, Karuna. Uh, you also see here that we have all the various ships of the line and the transport ships uh, that are in the harbor there to evacuate the uh, British Army. The British uh, in this particular uh, setup have got their usual uh, battalions and then they have their light company unit which is represented by just this little eight uh, that represents the companies that are associated with uh, the battalions. Um, sometimes when these uh, uh, companies are eliminated uh, they're done. Other times, uh, some of the units have the ability of regenerating uh, their light companies uh, by taking a uh, increment loss from the main battalion and then uh, reconstituting the light company. Uh, the British have really good fire values and uh, pretty fair uh, morale values in this army. Um, where they are really lacking is, of course, with cavalry. They just have this one small uh, squadron of uh, cavalry and then uh, these two uh, artillery and that's it. Now they do have the opportunity if uh, circumstances are right that the uh, British Navy might intervene in which case these ships of the line have got a pretty heavy fire value um, and can lay out quite a bit of fire to anything that's uh, nearby. Um, but you have to roll uh, for that to be triggered. So the, uh, the British are really going to rely on just their superior um, musketry values and then the use of their light uh, companies.